It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to travel and cruise industry news. On this, what is today? Today's the third day of June. Of course, this program is pre-recorded. Uh, this is Travel and Cruise Industry News for June the 3rd, 2022, coming to you from Bedford County, Virginia, Central Virginia area. Today, folks, other than a day that I'm in the hospital with some testing this morning as uh, when this show is on the air, today's National Donut Day. How about that? You know what to do about it, folks. Go out and get a nice, fresh, especially if you can get a fresh, warm donut. Yeah. Cruise ship sailing today from North America ports up in Boston. You got the Norwegian Pearl sailing, Port Canaveral, Carnival Liberty, Independence of the Seas, the Disney Dream. Down in West Palm Beach, Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. Down in Miami, the Miami Sky, uh, the Miami Sky, Norwegian Sky, Carnival Conquest and Freedom of the Seas. Carnival Conquest had an interesting close call yesterday. We'll get to that in a minute. Los Angeles, you got uh, out in Long Beach, you got the Carnival Radiance and over in San Pedro, Navigator of the Seas. Up in Seattle, Ovation of the Seas. Celebrity Solstice and Oceana Regatta all sail. In Vancouver, Radiance of the Seas, Land Package goes. Up in Juneau, Seaburn Odyssey, Land Package. In Anchorage, Celebrity Millennium, Norwegian Jewel, Land Packages, and the Zyderdam Cruise Package sails. In Fairbanks, Nordam's uh, land packages, Norwegian Jewel land package, and Majestic Princess land packages all get underway today. Headlines for today's show. Of course, we've got some weather updates we've got to talk about. Royal Caribbean to add ports of call on Singapore cruises. Carnival introduces a program for guests with food allergies. A water spout in Nassau Harbor. CDC elevates, elevates threat level for three Caribbean destinations. Former Norwegian skip, skip. A former Norwegian ship scrapped. Two injured on Celebrity Summit. And much more here at 11 o'clock this morning. If you're listening via the podcast, welcome aboard. You can always access the podcast via my blog, which is accessadventure.net, or wherever you get podcasts, all the majors like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all of them, tune in, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the big guys. Just search for travel and cruise industry news, and I'll pop up. Now, we, on several occasions, will be using pictures and clips and so forth, cruises I've been on, cruises other folks have been on, or from our guests, like yesterday. Anytime, if you're listening to the podcast, if you want to jump over and check the video feed, that uh, link is always in the description to the podcast. So you can always just go to the description, click on it, hop over to check the video feed out for pictures and clips of course as i mentioned today's show is pre-recorded as i'm currently in the hospital with some testing as i will be on the 7th and then on the 13th i will be meeting with the oncologist to find out what my options are and things that i need to do with this pesky recurrence of cancer We'll just have to see what uh, what's ahead. That's all. And just as an interesting note, my friend Rochelle, who's been on a Norwegian cruise, just got off a Norwegian cruise to the fjords. 
Uh, and way back when she first booked this cruise, she booked a an excursion uh, from Southampton, uh, where she came back uh, into port, uh, a five-hour excursion to Windsor Castle. She got back into port uh, yesterday and goes on the excursion to Windsor Castle, not realizing that when she booked the excursion, that this was going to put her right in the middle of the Queen's Jubilee celebration. So she had a nice little bonus there. That's pretty cool. I watched some of that on the, on the tube yesterday. Okay, so we got to talk about weather here this morning, folks. Uh, it's now been upgraded to one. It now has a number. <laughs> uh, it's not uh, officially named yet, however. That's coming later on today. And what we're going to talk about, that's what it's going to look like. So, um, Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunters find that the disturbance is producing tropical storm force winds and will be at the level to be named later on today. There's new storm warnings issued for Florida, Cuba, and Northwest Bahamas. Now, as of currently, the current location is probably about 145 or 50 miles north of Cozumel, about 400 miles southwest of Fort Myers, Florida. Maximum sustained winds of 40. Currently, it's moving to the northeast at six miles an hour. This general motion will uh, head in the same direction with increased forward speed, expecting to begin shortly, later today, noon or a little bit after, and continue through Sunday. On the forecast track, the system is forecast to move across the southeastern Gulf through tonight across southern and central portions of Florida Peninsula on Saturday, and then over the southwestern Atlantic north of northwestern Bahamas Saturday afternoon through Sunday evening. This will not get to hurricane strength, folks, but it's going to produce a ton of rain. 48 uh, hours, the potential for further development is 90%. And over five days, also 90%. The tropical uh, storm force winds are extending out 60 miles from the center. Now that's going to increase also. The estimated central pressure is 1,003 millibars. So... Uh, Cuba, Florida, areas in the Bahamas, y'all are going to get a ton of rain. Could be as much as a foot of rain in some places. Of course, this is going to affect, possibly affect some cruises that are sailing on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but we'll just have to see how and if any changes are made from that. All right, I'll be back with today's news after this word from one of our network sponsors. Royal Caribbean. Spectrum of the Seas is over there in Asia. It's been doing cruises from nowhere. Since the restart, Royal Caribbean International has been operating cruises to nowhere out of Singapore as uncertainty and closures still surround ports in Asia. As the world continues to get back to normal, the cruise line has announced that voyages on the Quantum Ultra Class ship Spectrum of the Seas will begin visiting destinations in Malaysia as soon as the 30th of June. 
The new three and four night itineraries will vi visit Penang and Kuala Lumpur. In Penang, guests will be able to visit Southeastern Asia's oldest Anglican church, St. George's Church. In Penang, passengers can venture into the Batu Caves, where colorful displays of Hindu de deities adorn the cave's limestone walls. All right, so we got some ports of call coming up on Singapore. A cruises. Carnival is, 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 is issuing a new program for those with food allergies. The line has just introduced a new food ingredient program that will make choosing dishes easier than ever. Carnival is launching a program called Menu Mate, which is the first of its kind among major cruise brands. It's been designed to mitigate the risk of allergic reactions to certain foods and make accommodating passengers with special diets more efficient than ever before. Here's basically how it works. Staff will, staff will ask guests about their food allergies and then enter them into a program on a touchscreen tablet, which will be found in restaurants across the fleet. The program, powered by Certistar software, will then sort through all available options. It will display which items are allergen-friendly, which can be modified to exclude allergens, and which dishes should be avoided. Guests also will have the option of using the menu mate tablet themselves, entering in their own allergy and dietary information and ordering from the options. This will include menu mate tablets on display near the Lido buffet stations, which will be available for passengers to use. So, I have one question about that. If this program is powered and run by Certistar, is that not Wi-Fi based? Will it operate on ships that have sketchy Wi-Fi? Or are the cruise lines going to have to buck up now and provide a good Wi-Fi, which they could do if they'd spend the money to have it satellite generated. Interesting question. One I'd like to raise with somebody from Carnival. John, where are you, John, when we need you? Referring to John Heald, of course. All right. Good. Uh, I like the sound of the program, though. All right, there was an interesting uh, occurrence yesterday in uh, Nassau, in the Bahamas. And unfortunately, folks, the video of this was on Twitter. And even though I have 125,000 followers on Twitter, I could not access it as far as downloading it on my computer so I could put it into stream yard for you folks to see so i go to twitter or it's it's up on on facebook which it takes you to the twitter feed uh so if you want to see this thing it's really kind of neat to see uh but at any rate yesterday a water spout was spotted in nasa harbor in the bahamas Twisting near cruise ships docked for the day to visit the nation's the uh, the island nation's capital. The brief occurrence did not impact the ships, nor was any damage reported as the water spout moved on to Paradise Island. The uh, water spout was recorded about 1:30 local time uh, yesterday afternoon. The funnel was sucking up water, caught some small pieces of debris which can be seen in the video posted to social media, which I could not access to use. I was going to show it to you this morning. The funnel was spinning deep in Nassau Harbor near the Sydney 48 bridge that connects the larger New Providence Island to the smaller Paradise Island. Observers reported that the water spout 
did move into Paradise Island, home of the famous Atlantis Casino Resort, a popular attraction among many cruise travelers. Folks visit not only for gambling, but also for the aquarium, water park, golf carts, restaurant, beaches, etc. Two cruise ships were docked in the vicinity in Nassau at the time of the water spout. Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas and the Carnival Conquest, which is now back on its own after its uh, mission of mercy to uh, help out the folks on Carnival Freedom and ceremonies unceremoniously dump our own Cindy Lee and the girls off uh, the Conquest that uh, they got kicked off of. All right, CDC, boy, they become a pain in the butt. I shouldn't say that. Just as the summer cruise travel season begins, the CDC has elevated the COVID warning for three popular Caribbean destinations, placing them at level three. Antigua, Jamaica, and Turks and Caicos are now all high risk. This new advisory recommends that travel who are not up to date on their vaccines to get to not travel or get the vaccines. And that's including the full initial initial series of vaccines, whether it's one or two shots and then whatever boosters are available. Mostly now are two boosters available. Or avoid travel destinations, classified as level three. Travelers who are considered at higher personal vulnerability due to weakened immune system or other health risk should also avoid travel to level three regions. That would be me. And no, I'm probably not going to change any of my plans as it stands now. All right, a former uh, Norwegian ship first set sail for Norwegian back, I don't know, 34 years ago, I think it was. The Norwegian Seaward reached her final destination. The vessel was beached at Aliaga, Turkey, yesterday, where she will be broken up for scrap metal. Seward left the NCL fleet in 2005 and has since been in possession of Star Cruises, part of the Genting Hong Kong operation, which filed for insolvency earlier this year. You know my feelings about Genting. Oh, well. All right. They had a little issue yesterday on celebrity ship two crew members from a cruise ship off the coast of virginia were evacuated by coast guard to sendera norfolk norfolk central hospital after certain suffering chemical burns as stated by the coast guard the two injured were on board the celebrity summit cruise ship approximately ah, close to 70 miles from shore The cruise ship contacted the Coast Guard 5th District Command Center, which sent the crew of the Elizabeth City Jayhawk Coast Guard helicopter to transport the injured. A doctor from the cruiser was also taken by helicopter to the hospital. The injured are currently being treated for chemical burns. According to Coast Guard, further medical care was needed. The identity of the crew members, their onboard position, as well as the extent of the injuries or how they're doing currently has not been made public. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap me up for today. Again, uh, apologies for not having the chat room. Uh, as again, this show has been pre recorded today since I'm in the hospital. I will see everybody back here on Monday for Monday Travel and Cruise Industry News. For now, stay safe, stay healthy, think about cruising. Hopefully one day soon we'll all get together on the high seas 
for now. This is the Fat Travel Guy. Later, y'all. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.